So one of the uh, key new features of the new 2018 ESC syncope guidelines is the introduction of a section on the management of the syncope patient in the emergency department. And this is important because across Europe many patients who present acutely with syncope are not managed by cardiologists or specialists in syncope, but in fact by emergency physicians, by acute medicine specialists and by internal medicine specialists. So it's very important that they should have some kind of a framework in which to help manage the acute syncope patient. So first of all, we've suggested that the, uh, the emergency clinician should first establish a diagnosis of transient loss of consciousness secondary to syncope and then establish whether there's an obvious underlying cause. And we know that that is present in about 50% of acute patients who present to the ED. In the 50% that do not have an obvious cause, we've introduced a risk stratification table which introduces classification of low risk and high risk based on um, uh, the history, the presenting, uh, so the, the presenting examination, the past medical history and the ECG. If a patient has predominantly low risk features, they can probably be safely discharged from the emergency department with education. And again, a new feature of these guidelines is that we've introduced a patient help sheet for those with low risk syncope. If patients have high risk features, then these patients need uh, urgent and timely investigation and may need to be admitted to hospital. However, another feature of these guidelines is that we're very much focused on trying to reduce admission in syncope patients um, using novel strategies such as syncope units and emergency department observation units where patients can be observed for six to 24 hours rather than being admitted to hospital. Now this isn't possible obviously in, in all hospitals and in all countries in, the, in Europe. However, I think this is something that the, the task force is striving to try and introduce across Europe so these patients can be rapidly assessed and managed and can see a syncope ex expert early on. And then they can be safely discharged without being admitted to hospital um, to a syncope outpatient clinic. Another feature of these guidelines is also we have, uh, we have suggested which features require patients to be hospitalised and which ones can be probably safely managed via these units and via outpatient clinics. And finally, there are many risk stratification scores and clinical decision rules that have been developed. However, the task force believes these are probably uh, no better than clinician judgment and uh, in these guidelines we um, have suggested that we don't recommend their routine in use. Thank you.